I think there's a real opportunity here for you in Google, and I want to emphasize that I did a video on Google just uh, two days earlier. I guess it came out on Friday. But this is a missed opportunity. Google's down about 23% from its high, and it's all wrapped around some uh, litigation and some regulatory restraints that may go after Google for its dominance in search. Put that aside, Google is leading the way in some other avenues that I, I think the market is missing. What I want to talk about is their position in AI, their position in the cloud, and their position in chips. I hope you know what a CPU is and how it's relevant to a GPU, but I want you to also know about Google's TPU. That's a tensor processing unit. What, in fact, Google has done is create a chip, design a chip specifically for its needs. And as a result of that, they will bring down their cost for providing the chip to process their data within their data centers and bring it lower than that of a uh, GPU, which is produced by uh, NVIDIA at this time with some pretty heavy markup. So what then Google has done is made that chip available to other uh, heavy processors. And you can see in this chart, there are other people doing the same, such as Amazon Web Service, this is Alibaba, and uh, uh, those two, of course, are being used in China to avoid the restrictions that the United States has put on NVIDIA and not allowing them to sell GPUs to China. But nonetheless, as you see in this chart, the real the leader in this field, and when I say leader in the field, I mean a alternative to NVIDIA's GPUs. And what, with some additional research, what you'll find is there are some people who are stepping up and saying, yes, we want access to that as well, Google. And those are people like Samsung and, a, uh, and Apple. They are using them in the uh, application towards the iPhone and then Samsung's phone as well. And the, between the two of them, they are the major providers outside of China of mobile phones. So Google is creating a niche over here that nobody's talking about. I don't think you've heard this on CNBC and you, you probably not haven't found heard it on Fox Business as well. Google has recognized, and, and again, put this into perspective, Google doesn't have a foundry. They aren't going to make this chip themselves. They are designing it, much as NVIDIA designs the GPU. They are designing their TPU. And then today they are making it uh, either it is being made, and I don't know this for sure, either in Taiwan Semiconductor or at Samsung. Because of their other relationship with Samsung, I wouldn't be surprised that's where it's being made. So with this in mind, Google is carving out a whole niche that the world is kind of ignoring. And there's some projections that I think I want you to be aware of, of what are their projected revenues, what are their projected earnings as a result of that, and how can we gain some gauge on what the future price of Google stock will be. So look at this chart here. In 2024, their revenues are projected to grow by 14%. And you can see all the way up to 30, their revenues are growing uh, anywhere from 14 uh, to 7%. Then, then look at their earnings per share. And you'll see the, the earnings per share are outpacing substantially the revenues. Well, now, why is that? Because their uh, investment in chips will be going down because they'll be using their own TPUs rather than Jensen, NVIDIA's GPUs. So their, their earnings per share are growing substantially and, uh, and, and, and continually. Uh, a big growth in 2024, a back off in 2025, and then a steady gain through 2030. Now what I'm showing is then what the analysts believe the forward 
P-E ratio will be. So what you have to do to determine the price of the stock is multiply the P forward P-E ratio times their earnings per share, and you'll come out with their projected price. Now, what you I, 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 this is Wall Street's best guess. My best guess is a little different. And if you'll go to my cheat sheet, you'll see where uh, Wall Street believes the price at the end of uh, 2024 will be 195. I believe it will be 197.96, uh, where they believe it will be 242 in 25, I believe it'll be 227.13. Why is this difference? Because they're increasing the P-E ratio at a greater rate than I am. I'm pursuing it much more conservatively, such as in 2026, the beginning of 2027, they're estimating a price of 320 a share. I'm estimating conservatively um, 291.25. That would represent a 100% increase in price from what it is today. So with that in mind, that what does that equate as a uh, annualized rate of return? If it does achieve my 291 or even better, and the, uh, Wall Street's 320, that's a 40% increase annualized per year. That's damn good. And if you can find anything better with less risk, uh, uh, buy it. The, the, then going on, you can see that they are projecting by the end of 2030 that Google will be at $560. Divide 160 into 550 and you'll see that's a substantial growth. Why again is this? Because Google is producing a replacement or a substitute for GPUs, probably at a lower price. And then they're building relationships with the people who need are going to need those TPUs in the future, and that's Apple and Samsung. It should be a given that somebody is going to present com some competition to NVIDIA and advanced micro devices, and it looks like it's going to be Google. So with that in mind, I think this is a no-brainer. And, and again, I want to emphasize its price is down about 23% because of these litigation matters. Now, is that in fact going to happen? Well, I think what you need to understand is that AI is an improvement on search. I can go to uh, Google and I can ask a question uh, such as I am doing some research on who are the largest providers of financial information on the internet and I want to know what their revenues are. I can either go in and search each and every one of the Yahoo's, Yahoo Finance, or Seeking Alpha, or Zacks, I can go in and, and find out what their uh, fees are. I can find search individually, or I can go to ChatGPT or uh, Meta AI and just ask the question, what are the revenues and um, fees of each of these five sources of information, and it'll give it to me directly. So to my way of thinking, that is in direct competition with Google search. And I can do it on Meta AI. I can do it on Microsoft's ChatGPT. I can do it on Google's Gemini. So I think there's a litigation that they're talking about of the monopoly that Google has on search only tells me they don't have a clue about what, what uh, AI is all about. That is going to be in the past. You are going to make a decision of who's ChatGPT, Gemini, or, uh, micro, or Meta's uh, AI. You're going to make a decision which one you want. You're probably going to pay $19.99 a month for it. And only on an occasion, on simple questions, will you use Bing or Google as your source for information. That's my opinion. That's all any of this is, is my opinion. I've been in this business for a long time 
And uh, I've experienced the dot-com bubble. I've experienced the subprime crisis. I think we're going into, I've experienced the EV bubble. Uh, That was the latest one. Uh, And I think there are some people who don't really understand AI or the speed at which it is going to come into our lives. Um, and, And they're creating some fear. Now, the other thing you need to know and this is something I've learned if, in, in, over my years in business, is follow the money. If someone is spending or people are spending trillions of dollars on GPUs, CPUs, and TPUs, you've got to ask yourself the question, why? Why are they doing that? Well, the answer is evident because there is more to be gained by owning those CPUs, GPUs, and TPUs than there is in the expense. A substantial multiple. Uh, as I say, there a multiple of anywhere, forward PE ratios of anywhere from 21 to 27 times. That's why they're be- be- spending this money because they think they're going to get a 20 to 25 or 27 multiple on their investment. That's simple business. Follow the money. And right now, that's Google, Amazon, Microsoft, and Meta. And the clear best place to invest is Google because it's selling at a discount of about 23% today. So that's what I'm doing. If this is the kind of information you want, come sign up and get on the bus. We've got a 14-day free trial. I think... If you've been in investing for any period of time, you know there are ups and downs. You know there are surges and then there are pullbacks. We're in a pullback. You've got an opportunity to make more money than you ever have. If you will put yourself, if you will follow the money. I'm Kerry Grinkmeyer. I'm a retired financial advisor. I'm trying to build. I'm going to be very straight with you. I'm trying to replace Yahoo Finance, Motley Fool. I'm I'm going to build a channel that is cheaper, it's more inclusive, it's more engaging. We we just had a stock talk on Friday, and a gentleman raised his hand and said, I'd like to show you the algorithm that I've built to predict the price of a stock within a 90% accuracy on a swing trading basis. That's right. Um, He's going to present it again to me and show proof of concept next week. And we're going to enter into an agreement and you're going to have the opportunity to access this information on a chart that's going to give you red lights, yellow lights, and green lights. And you can then make good, timely investment decisions based on algorithms generated by a AI science engineer. And it all goes going to come from best of us investors. I'm Kerry Grinkmeyer, I'm a retired financial advisor. I'm doing this for you. I'll talk to you again tomorrow.